Hello everyone. For today's wellness session, I'm going to be talking about Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, also known as ADHD. This will actually be the first video in a short series of wellness videos surrounding ADHD. The purposes of these videos will be to um, provide some education and information surrounding this disorder, as well as offer some tips, tools, and strategies that can help an individual strugg struggling in these, any of these areas that we discussed today um, be successful and thrive. In today's session, I'm going to be sharing behavioral characteristics of ADHD. It's important to note that if you've been diagnosed with ADHD, you may be struggling in some or all of these areas that I talk about today. It's also important to note that even if you haven't been diagnosed with ADHD, or even if you um, don't meet the criteria to be diagnosed with the disorder, that you could still benefit from some of the strategies we discussed in the following sessions if you do identify um, as having difficulty in some of the areas that I share in the behavioral characteristics. So let's get started. For the first behavioral characteristic I want to talk about is attention. So an individual that's um, struggling with symptoms related to ADHD um, consistently has difficulty uh, sustaining attention for a longer period of time. Which, needs, which leads nicely into our second behavioral characteristic of easily distracted by external or internal stimuli. So when I say external, I mean something that's um, going, on, going on in your immediate surroundings. So um, for a classroom example, uh, that might be someone tapping their pencil or noise in an adjacent classroom or some somebody moving something in the hall or just another class moving, um, transitioning from class to class. And when I say internal stimuli, that would be more like thoughts or feelings. So um, if you're, you may remember if you've been watching our wellness tips with Lori, that um, our thoughts are automatic. We have thoughts, of, our brain is sending us messages all throughout the day. And if we're not being mindful, um, then it's easy sometimes to get lost in those thoughts, which in a classroom could present as daydreaming. Body aches and muscle tension can also be considered internal stimuli, and they can be cause for distraction for an individual struggling with ADHD as well. Our third behavior characteristic is frequent movement from one activity to another. And our fourth is difficulty completing tasks um, due to diverted attention. And I set those together because the example that I'm going to provide, um, it relates to both of those, the um, difficulty with task completion and also the moving from um, one activity to another just all over the place. Um, so my example is um, I'm responding to an email first thing in the morning when I get to work. And then a coworker comes in and asks me for an update on a student. And as I'm searching for that update, because I've stopped responding to my email and am now searching for the update on the student, um, my phone goes off indicating that I've received a text message. So now I've stopped searching for the update and I'm reading my text message. Then my phone rings. I stop responding to the text message and I answer my phone and a staff member is asking me to do a home visit to check on a student. So I stop, um, well, I've already said that I stopped responding to my text message. Now I begin searching um, for the student's information so that I can make the home visit and gather everything up that I need. So now like an hour and a half has passed and I haven't completed one activity um, that I've started or even checked anything off my original to-do list. So that example really goes along with actually all four of the behavior characteristics that we've um, talked about. The next behavior is characterized by social impulsivity. This could look like blurting out answers without raising your hand in class 
or um, difficulty awaiting your turn to share in a group. It could even look like um, difficulty adhering to personal space or just others' personal boundaries in general. The sixth behavior is characterized by hyperactivity, which can look like um, a lot of physical movement, like getting up, getting up and down out of your seat, just difficulty sitting still in general, um, fidgeting, restlessness, just a lot of movement here in, in this area of concern. The seventh behavior is characterized by difficulty remembering and following rules. And the eighth behavior is characterized by poor organization skills, poor study habits, and difficulty doing things on their own or independently. So this individual might require some additional um, adult supervision, maybe more instruction, and even a little more redirection. The ninth behavior is characterized by engaging in risk-taking behaviors. So this um, individual might be considered like the daredevil of the class. If, if peers are wanting somebody to do something, they know that if they call out this individual, he'll be sure to do it. And also um, under this section is the individual is characterized as being maybe accident prone. So running into things, falling, tripping, um, just accident prone in general. The 10th behavior is characterized by excessive talking and difficulty monitoring voice volume. So this individual may um, ramble when they're trying to tell a story or, you know, have experienced difficulty getting to the point, talk in circles, maybe even never get to the point. And they just may be loud, um, maybe even in situations where they know that they're supposed to be quiet. They just don't even realize how loud they're being. Like in a library, everybody pretty much knows that um, it's socially acceptable to be very quiet and it's not acceptable to be loud. So that would be an area where this individual may struggle. And our last, uh, our 11th um, behavior is characterized by low self-esteem and a lot of different things can play into why the individual may be having experiencing um, low self-esteem. It could be due to uh, the difficulty with the, within the social setting, the social interactions, or picking up on social cues. Also, it could just be um, due to the frustration experience, like in the classroom with the inability, inability or difficulty to complete those tasks or stay on track, stay on task, um, and sustain their attention. So that's definitely an area of concern that would need to be addressed as well. This concludes the list of behavioral characteristics of ADHD that I wanted to share with you today. I do want to mention that, that this is by no means an inclusive list of symptoms and behaviors related to ADHD that an individual diagnosed with this disorder may experience. Because the behavior characterized by hyperactivity seems to be the most known um, symptom of ADHD, I would like to say that an individual can be diagnosed with ADHD without experiencing symptoms related to the hyperactivity, um, the difficulty um, sitting still, the physical movement, the high energy. So some individuals that are diagnosed with ADHD don't have that at all. They just experience the symptoms related to the um, the inattention and you know difficulty staying on task and completing tasks. I hope that you'll join us next week as we talk about strategies and tools that you can use if you're experiencing difficulty in any of the areas that we discussed today.